All right, people, let's get it started. Wow. All right, so as you can see from the, uh, what is it called? The description, wait, not description, the title of the video, we are doing energy today. So energy is a somewhat complicated thing, and there are tons and tons of different kinds of energy. Like, if there's any one kind of energy, there can be multiple different kinds. Like, for example, with the most kinds of different energies is potential and kinetic. So with potential energy, you can have gravitational potential energy. You can have elastic potential energy, chemical potential energy. It's so many amounts of different types of energy. It's just crazy. So we're going to start with the very first experiment. And it is going to involve electrical energy. So I'm going to tell you some of the supplies that will be needed for this experiment. The first one, scissors. Second, you need some copper tape. Now this may sound a little strange because this stuff is tape, it's sticky on the bottom, but it's got copper wiring, so I can, you can use it for electrical stuff. Then you need an index card, or it could be a piece of paper, just easier with an index card. Then you need one of these little battery things. It's a circle, and it's like one of those batteries that you put in my watch. And then we have the thing that is going to be powered, which is a little minuscule light bulb. Very small. Okay, so by starting with all of this, the first thing you want to do is, you, well, you have your card, right? And you take this and you cut it into two separate strips. So it's easier if you cut a long one. And when you cut it, it's a lot easier to cut than like, it's not like cutting through copper wiring. It's really thin amounts. So what you want to do is like measure, I guess you take this, bend it in half, and then cut it in half so you have just about an equal amount. Now, I've done this many, many different times, and there have been many different issues that can occur while doing this experiment. So if it doesn't go completely good, bear with me. So... Once again, I'm having major trouble taking the sticky part off of uh, copper tape. Don't know why that's always a big issue. <laughs> but um, let's see if I can do this this way easier. Aha! I've got it. Well, the first part of it, at least. Oh my gosh, no, it's peeling away. Aha! Aha! So... Copper tape. This is basically what it looks like. It's literally metal tape. Now I'm gonna take this, and you wanna stick it on the card in one line, right on it, like this. Got one line, like this. Woo! Okay, then you wanna take the second part of your bit of copper, and you wanna peel it off again, which most likely I will have a little bit of issues with. <sighs> okay, I guess me and tape. Oh, wait, hold on. I found a little bit that was already off from me cutting it. So close. No! Oh gosh. <laughs> Aha, I've got it. Now you have your other bit of metal tape and you wanna stick it on the other side. If I can get it to all face one direction. Okay. Now we have two lines of copper tape next to each other, like this. One line and another line. Like this. It's like railroad tracks. Now, the next thing you want to do. Now, um, so 
you want to take another smaller, way smaller piece of copper tape about this big, like just about this large, to connect the two. So we are basically building a circuit on paper. Now, a circuit, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a amount of power that connects to, you know, some copper stuff or some kind of metal that is conductive, which conductive means that um, electricity is able to pass through it very easily. So you're basically creating a circuit. So you want to connect all four parts. Now we have it like this. So we got boom, boom, and phew. Like that, so we have it connected here. Now the next thing we're gonna do is cut off another small-ish part. And this is the part that you need the battery. Cause without the battery, there would be no power. And that is one of the essential parts of this experiment. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it, like, oh there that goes. Okay, <laughs> so you have your little battery and you have this piece of copper tape. Now, like I said, this copper is conductive. So, and on this watch battery, like most batteries, there's a positive and a negative side. So you wanna attach the sticky part to the positive side of this battery. Yes, Rachel, we did do this in science class one time. So you wanna attach the negative side to one side of this and the other side to this part. So you wanna lay it down like this. Let's see if I can get it on right. So if it sticks over, it doesn't really matter. Now, basically I have it like this. So you're able to take it on and off, basically like a light switch. Cause when it's connected, it, there's electricity flowing through here. And when I let go, there's not. I just realized something. I, I did not do this part right. So you don't want to actually have it like this. You want to take your piece of tape that you have on the end here, and you want to make it really small. You want really small pieces. There we go. Very small pieces, like this. You want to have really small pieces that's connecting to it. Then we have our light. Now, this light also has a positive and a negative side. So when I take it apart little by little like this, I don't exactly remember which side is the correct side, but I'm going to test it and figure it out using the scientific method. Also, extra points to anyone who knows who invented the scientific method. All right, so you wanna connect one part here, and you want to move, ah, move this part over, and put this, that part might not be long enough. Nope, not long enough, I gotta cut a little bit of a straw here. All right, a little more copper tape isn't bad. And if you don't know where to get the copper tape, I'm pretty sure they sell it at like any hardware store, but I got it off of Amazon, so you can pretty much get it. It's not super hard to find, basically saying. But it is kind of hard for me to get this tape off of this. Here we go. Okay, I got this on here. And I'm gonna take that and put it here. Now, what's really important, there we go. I already got it to work, nice. So, um, this light is orange. I actually had no clue what color the light would be. But, watch. So, we have now a closed circuit. We have the battery going basically like this. When I connect it, it goes and it goes in a little circle. It's like a race car going along a track. Left turn, left turn, left turn. And when I connect it, voila! Orange light. Now, you probably can see the light going easier if I go like that. And you can do it to do like Morse code too. You go, dear, 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 like that. And it's actually really handy if like, I don't know, I guess you could use it to make a flashlight. And these, you could probably buy bigger lights than this 
And these lights you can also get on Amazon. They're just little LED lights. And you can just put it off and put it back on. Ah, and ah. And basically, it works just like that. And there's other things that you can do with the um, battery. Like, you can connect a ton of other stuff with this. But the easiest is with the light. Nice. Okay. That was experiment number one. But we have more. But I gotta move all this stuff out of the way first. Anybody have any questions on that experiment? Like, if I missed anything, or if they don't know how to make it, or anything, I will take any questions. Okay. No questions? Okay, we're moving on, next experiment. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is an experiment with elastic energy. Now, elastic energy is basically described best with a rubber band. Like that. So, when I pull a rubber band back, right, this may not seem kind of boring, but when you pull a rubber band back, it creates elastic potential energy. And potential energy is basically saying the potential to do energy. Now, when I let go of this rubber band, like that, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is the energy that goes, makes it move. Like, pew. Now, I have a rubber band gun. So, when I do that, when I put this on here, and I put it all the way over here, and you put it on correctly, now, right now, you can see the rubber band's really stretched out from here all the way over here, which gives it quite a bit of elastic potential energy. But when I pull the trigger and this moves forward, it becomes elastic kinetic energy. Now, if you don't have one of these nifty rubber, bands, blah, rubber band guns over at your home, I'm going to show you how to make one with your hands. Not like make one with your hands, but like your hand is a rubber band gun. It's amazing. So, rubber band and hand, materials you need to get. And you can pretty much use any rubber band. Like the rubber bands I'm using are the rubber bands that came with this. But you can use pretty much any kind of rubber band. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn your finger into a gun. And just for me, don't shoot rubber bands at anyone. And especially don't point it at people's face or if they're not ready to receive it, just don't shoot it at them. So basically saying don't hurt anyone with rubber bands. So you take the rubber band, you're holding it back with one hand. You still have the gun figurine in your hand. You pull it back, right? Because if you do this, you can still shoot it and it still works. But to make a rubber band gun, you go here, you wrap it around your finger and you hold it. Oh, I just messed up that time. But you get the idea. You put it around like this, and you hold on to it, and then you let go with your pinky, like that. And when you let go, it the kinetic, well, potential energy is converted into kinetic off of my finger. It goes like that. It's absolutely amazing. And also, one of the tricks that I just found out is when you do it, you can't like have it wrapped around your finger like this, because then it's really hard to shoot off like that. It like, you have to move your finger a lot. But if you have your rubber band, ow. If you have your rubber band, pull it back, and then you hold on to it with your finger, with your pinky finger. Oh man, my finger looks kind of messed up like that. But if you hold on to it and then let go with this pinky finger, then you're able to and fly. So if anybody has any questions about rubber band guns, I'd like to know that. Okay, so we have our next experiment, which is involving heat energy. So I have recently acquired some candles and I am turning, well, 
And I'm not turning anything, but I'm saying I am turning nine today, basically. And basically, this is a pretty cool experiment that you can do. If I can get this apple to stand up right. No. I'm going to lean it up against something. I'm going to lean it up against the rubber band gun. Aha! Then, there's some danger here. you got matches. Now, we are dealing with heat energy right now. So, and when you use matches, also have a parent around you when you use them, because being burned is not fun at all. So, when you do it, you strike a match and you go, Woo! It's magic. It's science. So I have this lit match, right? Now I'm going to take it and light this candle. The candle is now lit. Now that's not the science. The science is if I blow this candle out, you see how it went back? I'm going to put my hand right in front of it so you can see the light from the candle and how this works. Oh, this went out the same exact time. I might have blown both out at the same time. Okay, but I did it once. Yeah, I did it the first try, which deserves a like on this stream. Aha! All right. No, so close. Okay. So I have, uh-oh. I have the candle. Uh oh, I'm gonna set this match down really quick. Try not to set anything on fire when you're doing this. Okay, I'm just gonna hold it. Oh, there we go. Set up on its own. I can grab another match. Okay, so the candle is lit. I'm just gonna use this here so I don't have to. Aha. So when you take this and you blow out the candle, like so, you can basically, when you touch the flame to the smoke from the candle, it reignites. Like I'll do it again. And it makes a sound too. Also, when you are um, lighting a candle, it's actually multiple different kinds of energy. So when you have just a normal candle, like, oh man, it's not going out. <laughs> At least I didn't knock over the candle that time. Man, this apple doesn't like to stand up. Okay, well, that's good enough for now. So when you light a candle, it's actually really interesting because the candle doesn't really have any energy, you would think, right? So it's actually chemical energy. Now, when I take a match and light it, like so, and I light the candle, if it wants to light, there we go. So it's the chemical energy actually being converted into heat and light energy. Which I find is kind of interesting because uh, it's like chemical energy, right? It's like you wouldn't even think that a candle would have energy, right? But literally everything is energy. Everything. Like me talking. What you're hearing, that's sound waves, sound energy. The light coming from the screen that you're watching on, that's light energy and electrical energy. You literally can't avoid it. And when you eat, you're also using energy. You're converting the chemical energy from the food you're eating and you're digesting it, and your body turns that into energy that fuels your body, which is insane because energy is literally everywhere, always watching you. So I'm gonna do this a couple more times because I actually think it's very interesting because when you just You blow it out, and then you just touch, literally, you just touch the flame 
to the match and it relights like goes back. I, I swear, I'm not even touching it. I'll hold it here. Ah, I'll hold the kid until it's dead. I'll hold it here. Oh ah, no, it's too late. The candle went out. F's in the chat for the candle. The candle went away. But we will get it back up. And what I think is kind of ironic is that I needed one candle. And I went to Target this morning and guess how many candles there was there? One. Only one candle. It was meant to be. And also, lighting a match, that's also energy. Because when you're striking a match, you're using friction. If I can light it. Aha! You're using friction to start a chemical reaction. And if you didn't watch the stream yesterday, you'll know. Why? Went out immediately? Okay, I'll have to do another one then. But basically saying, when you do it, it's when you use friction, it's starting a chemical reaction. And if you didn't see the vi uh, stream from yesterday, or I actually did a video on it too, it's like heat is a showing that a chemical reaction is happening. It's either color change, I don't think matches like like me right now. Okay, well, anywho, I guess that's it for that experience. But basically saying when you do it, make sure that you have an adult supervision or an adult doing it for you so you don't get burnt by the candle or the match or burn something with the candle or the match. Ah! Ah! Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we are going to use a special little friend of mine energy, which is gravitational energy. Now, gravity, as you may or may not know, is what keeps us on the ground, it keeps me from floating into space, and keeps your phone, iPad, or computer floating away from your hands. And so basically saying, I have this. You may not know what this is. It is something that will help me save a ton of time. So I'm going to keep this here. And I'm gonna take this. Now these are a well-known toy, if I can get one out. A domino. It is a domino setter upper. That is what I'm calling it. So you take this and you turn it on. Magic science. And this is also using energy too. It's taking the energy from the battery and it's running it all the way through. This one domino on the very top isn't coming out. Oh, there we go. That worked easier now. So basically, it may not look like it, but all of these dominoes have energy. It has gravitational potential energy. And so does a ton of other things. Basically, well, I'm just gonna wait for this to finish. Slowly but surely. This is also really cool when you're like building a domino set so you don't knock anything over. So the machine doesn't tell you. Woo! We have dominoes. I'm just gonna move this over here. So all dominoes have, well, all these dominoes have gravitational potential energy. Because when I tip one over, like so, anybody know what's going to happen? Anybody? It's going to go like this. Amazing. So, pretty much saying, the reason why the the dominoes toppled over is because all of them had gravitational potential energy. Now, for example, when I have, for example, a ping pong ball, it appeared out of nowhere. You have a ping pong ball, this has gravitational potential energy. Now, what I find is really cool is when this gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy, like this. 
then basically say when the ball is here and it starts going down, at what point do you think it will have the most amount of kinetic energy? Like, let's say this has 100 joules of kinetic energy, oh, potential energy, and I drop it. At what point will this ball have the most amount of kinetic energy? At, like, what point? Because I'll either give you option A, B, or C. So A, B, or C. Anybody know? At what point it has the most amount of kinetic energy when it has been transferred? A, B, C. C, B, A, A, B, C. I need some answers. Oh, I keep on knocking over more dominoes. Andrew says C. You're correct. It is C. So, when this goes from here, it has the most energy here because right before it drops, it would have the most because it's collecting it as it is going down. Well, not collecting, but it's being, you know, transferred from point A to C. And right before this minuscule millimeter here, well, give the most. Right here. Now, here's another thing. So, when you have the gravity, right, it will go from, like, point A to point C. But the question still stands. What happens when I take a ball and throw it like this, right? Is there gravity still acting upon the ball when it's, you know, still going through the air? Oh, gosh. Going through the air. And the answer is yes, there is still gravity acting upon the ball. Now, oh, more ping pong balls appearing out of nowhere. Magic, science. So when the ball is traveling through the air, at any point there is gravity working upon it. And when it starts from the highest point to wherever its destination is, it is the potential energy to kinetic energy which, like I said at the beginning of the stream, is literally the biggest amount of energy. Now, next experiment. But I have to clear all these dominoes out first. Ooh. Okay, so we have now our next experiment. So, we are going to do something fairly interesting. So this next experiment involves chemical energy. Now, like I said earlier, when you eat food, food has energy inside of it. And when you eat it, it turns it into more energy for your body so your body can function. So I'm going to use some lemons, amazing lemons. And this little kit that, once again, I have bought off of Amazon. So this experiment takes a little bit of time to prepare. Now I'm just going down here because it's easier for me to get at the limones. So I'm going to take out all this contents. So I don't know if I've said this yet, but I'm building a lemon battery. So with a battery, like what... I showed you from our little thing with this, You, it, the battery has a positive and negative end. Now, if a lemon has energy inside of it, I can use that energy to power something else. Now, even if your lemons are especially hard, like this one, you can squish it together like this. Basically, squish it together and that will get all the juices which have all the electric energy and chemical energy inside of it going through. Okay, now once it's like this, you will have to take these things, oh, I grabbed the wrong, wrong one, um, these things which have a positive 
a negative side. Oh, these still smell like oranges from the last time I did this. Now, um, when you do this, you can use this to do many different things and power a lot of different stuff. But what I'm going to be powering today is a mini clock. And let's see if this works. Also, from earlier, I don't know if anybody asked what, uh, well, no, if anybody answered what the name of the person who created the scientific method was. And I'm going to tell you. His name is Sir Francis Bacon. That's right. I said Bacon. And he created the scientific method. Now, we're going to use the scientific method to do this experiment. Now, with the scientific method, we have to first create a hypothesis. For our hypothesis, I'm going to say the lemons, if I only do, if I do enough lemons, then this will, if I do five, no, three lemons, that it will work. So I know how my hypothesis. Now we're going to test that hypothesis by doing our experimentation, which is what I'm currently trying to do, and I must squeeze my lemon. And the more you squeeze the lemon, or if you, you can also roll it and apply pressure like that, and then you can get the stuff moving. So I'm gonna stick the negative end inside of this part of the lemon, right? And then, oh, I need another positive. And so for every lemon, you need a positive and negative end. So I'm gonna connect this one in here, and I'm gonna need one more lemon. I'm gonna try to do this for you. Oh, this one's already nice and squishy. All right. Now I'm gonna do this thing. Oh wait, I need one more of these things. Aha. And you gotta make sure not to put two of the wrong ends in there. And I did that, I've done that a couple times. And then realized after the fact of doing the experiment that I put it in the wrong way. So just make sure you have it, the positive and negative end in every single one. Man, these lemons smell good. I like lemons. Okay, so gonna connect the very last one in. All right. So we now have our, and that came disconnected. Okay, you wanna make sure all the pieces are connected too. Now, once again, all of the metal inside of here is conductive metal, which means that it allows the electricity to flow through it. So now we have our little clock, and I'm going to try connecting it. All right, let's see if I can get this to work. Right. I may or may not have put it on the wrong side. Oh, no. Oh, so close. Aha! I have gotten it to work with three lemons. I don't know if you can see the little bit of, it says 12 o'clock on here. And I don't remember how long I had it work. I think it was six days, but surprisingly, using fruit, I can get this clock to work for like six days, almost an entire week, which I think is like fairly crazy because it's lemons. And you wouldn't really think that lemons could like fuel other stuff, right? Because, you know, lemons could fuel your body, but they can also fuel clocks. Okay, so now we have done our hypothesis and experimentation. Now, the results are that it worked. The experiment absolutely 100% worked, right? And I think we should test it again, but with another lemon. Well, one or two more. I'm going to squeeze this one. Oh, 
Oh, this one's already kind of squishy too. Man, those two ones in the beginning were extremely hard. It's probably better to get the more ripe lemons because that, those ones, the juice is already flowing. All right, I'm gonna add this last little one. And, oh yeah, 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 right here. And then this is going to connect here. And this one is gonna connect in there. And it should still be working. Yes, it is working. And one thing that is also kind of interesting is that when you disconnect, like I disconnect one of these cables, like so, you, the numbers go away. But as soon as I reconnect it, the clock continues going. Dun, dun, dun! Which I find pretty cool. And just keep in mind, like for literally every lemon, you need a positive, a negative, one of these little metal things, and you have the negative clamp connecting to the negative thing. And most of the time, the negative side is either in blue or in black, and the positive side, a majority of the time, is in red. And if you have it like that, it works. Okay, now we're going to do this experiment once again, but just a tad bit differently. Okay. Just removing all these things from the lemons, like so. Now, after you do this with the lemons, I wouldn't really advise using them because unless it's like you clean these before you put them in there, which I did not do, then you probably shouldn't consume the lemons, at least the parts that have been punctured by these things. Okay, so we are going to do our next thing, but something else that may or may not contain energy. So we are going to use a potato. Now, potatoes, you probably would think, what kind of energy, what? This is like a lemon and a potato? Why would a potato work? I don't know, does it work? Let's use Sir Francis Bacon's method and see if we can get his amazing method to get our clock working. So I have this here and I've got to reconnect everything. All right, so we have this reconnected. I'm going to connect one of these into the potato and a second one into the potato, like this. And you want to just one, I know I'm probably repeating myself, but it's really important that you have the two in there because it's always really annoying if it is not both in there. Like I was just about to put the wrong one in there. Wait, I'm confused. Wait, no, I'm not. Okay. And for this set, I got this one on Amazon too. So pretty much everything I get is off of Amazon. I'm just realizing that now. Okay. Got the potatoes in here. Now I understand why I flipped everything. I had two of the wrong ones inside of there. That would not have been good. All right, let me just reconnect this thing in here. Ah! I'm going to put it in the same spot that it was at. And I'm going to put this one back in here. And I'm going to connect the two of them inside of the potato. Okay, so I don't know if I have it connected correctly because nothing's showing up right now. So, wait, I forgot to make a hypothesis. Uh, okay, we skipped the hypothesis part. So we skipped right to experimentation. Now, for some reason, 
this isn't working correctly. It might be because I still have the, I gotta check and see if everything's still connected on here. That's good, that's good. Ah! That's good. That's good. This one looks fine. I'm gonna try putting this in a different part of the potato. It might be because I have like, if the because the lemon juice is still on there, and then it's just not wanting to work. Let's see. This is a negative end, right? I feel like this might be rusted or something like that. All right, we have that in there, and that in there. I'm gonna not connect these two things. That smells like potatoes. Wonderful. So, I wonder what the issue is. Because my little clock is not turning on still. Got one side, and then the other side. Ah! Now the circuit light's working again. Okay. I thought for some reason when I connected this, this this light turned on, and then I thought it was somehow turning on that light. Maybe instead what we could try doing, because maybe it's not producing enough energy, maybe I can try connecting the light instead of the clock, because I have other lights in play. Yeah. And if you guys missed the circuit from the beginning, you can always go back to the beginning part of the stream and it you can still see the beginning of the stream, no matter what, even afterwards. This wasn't connected. That better not be the reason why it wasn't working. That that won't be good. Okay, that's connected. Okay, moment of truth. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna switch these around. I'm gonna try squeezing the potatoes. Oh. I got it. Maybe if you do mashed potatoes, it will work. That's interesting though. I'm squeezing the potatoes. The light still isn't turning on. I'm pretty sure I don't have the sides wrong. Maybe I need to clean these things. I don't think the potato likes when those things are in there because it's getting stuck on there. I'm gonna take these things out. I'm gonna wipe them down. I feel a little. There's definitely energy. I felt like a little shock. Now all these things smell like potatoes. Yeah, I'm feeling shocked. Why? Why? Why is this not working? Magic paper towels. Okay, so I'm gonna try wiping these off. And let's see if I can get this to work. And this is like one important value to have when you're doing science experiments. They're not always gonna like work the very first time. Like when I did the candle, that was the very first time I had done it. Like very first time. And that doesn't always happen. Most of the time, it's never, never the first time. So, determination is a true value in science. All right. I'm getting stuff off of them. I'm seeing stuff on the paper towels. This might be it. We might have had a scientific breakthrough. Okay, we're doing the experiment all over again. Hypothesis. It will work with four potatoes. 
And the objective of the experiment is to get a light working or clock, either or. So I'm going to start with this one going this way. It's possible because I switched around some stuff. I'm going to put it in a different part. Again, we're going to see if that works. I probably should have kept it exactly the same as with the lemons. But I'm almost 100% sure this works. I mean, I, I've never done it with potatoes before. Okay. That is connected. Then I have these two. And this is connected. And that's in there at a different point. And if anybody has any suggestions, like they've done this before, I will take any suggestions. Okay, got this one in here. What side is that? That's negative, positive in there. Poke it in there. I'm gonna take this one and poke it in this potato at a different point. Bring it a little deeper than that. And then I'm gonna take this wait for. Huh? Where did I go? I put these in the wrong way again. Even when I said I was putting in the positive one, I was putting in the negative one. Nice. All right, so close, last one. Okay, that was it. There. Okay, moment of truth, people. Moment of truth. It still isn't working. Okay, I'm gonna switch it around and see if I have these on the negative side instead of the positive side. Hmm. You know what? Maybe I need to switch the negatives around with the positives. Like I need to have the positive on this side and the negatives on this side and I need to switch everything around. Okay, I'm switching everything around. I feel like I'm missing like one little thing. So close. There's a lot of wetness in these potatoes. So close. All right. Then, what? How did I get another positive end? What? How do I keep on? I feel like I'm turning them around and then turning them back. Okay, this is, I'm just going to try this one last time, and then we're going to try something else. Okay. Let's see if I have it right this time. Didn't work again. Just going to twist it around. Still isn't working. I'm gonna try using the clock this time and see if it works with the clock. To see if any kind of energy is produced. Oh, I got it to work. Yay. So it was working, but maybe the light uses, probably, the light uses more energy than the clock, so I wasn't able to do that. Interesting! But it, it shows 12 o'clock. I've done it. I have turned on a clock with potatoes. 
Interesting. Okay, we're going to do the Slump and Battery experiment one last time. But, with apples. Three. And four. Now that should be a little quicker since I already have it set up. And I'm not going to change it this time. And if it doesn't work, then I'm going to squeeze some apples. Wait, I wonder if I can still get it to work if I changed this with a lemon, with my squishy lemon. Wait, hold on. It's working with me. Wait. I am the circuit now. Aha! It's still turning on with me touching it. Okay, so if I do this, I... Uh-oh. No, it disconnected. Oh. All right, still working. And then, so we have an apple, potato, a lemon, and me. Wait. Aha! Circuit. Yeah, your body also transfers energy. So, that's actually really interesting. I'm using an apple, potato, and lemon for a clock. So, if you are ever short of a clock in your room, just remember. You have an apple, potato, lemon, and yourself. You can power a clock for six days straight. And then you can just get more new potatoes and lemons. It's amazing. Uh-oh, it turned off. Oh, that thing disconnected. Okay, here we go. It's back on! I've created a working clock. Amazing! And I let go. Oh, I don't even have to touch it. If the positive and negative side are still touching like this, disconnected, reconnected. Amazing. We have created a more Thai fruit clock. I'm going to keep this like this. In the, I'm going to keep it in the potato, and I'll keep you posted tomorrow if you come and join the stream to see if our... Apple, potato, and lemon clock is still working. Oh, this is disconnected already. Okay, somebody mark the time. 12.02 p.m. We will check tomorrow at 12.02 p.m. to see if this is still working. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in to the Science Kid Camp, day number two, and where we covered energy. And basically, just remember, energy is all around us, and you can do tons of cool experiments to show you that there's energy in a lot of stuff, including apple, potato, lemon, and me, and you. All right, I'll make sure to see you guys next time. All right, make sure to see you guys next time. Bye!